Okay, today we're going to study photosynthesis. There's two parts. Photo, the light reaction. Synthesis, the Calvin cycle. So the first process requires light. The second process is going to synthesize or make sugar. This happens in the organelle, the chloroplast. Chloroplast is in plants and algae. Remember, it's got a double membrane. It's got its own ribosome. Okay, inside the chloroplast, there are thylakoids, and a stack of thylakoids are called a grana. So here they are right here. Okay, and, um, there's many of these in a chloroplast, but I'm just going to draw one for my picture here. So this is the thylakoid inside the chloroplast. Inside the chloroplast, there is a phospholipid bilayer, just like the cell membrane. But this one is special. It's called an electron transport chain. And it does just what the name says. It transfers electrons in order to make energy. So the light reaction is going to make energy. So here I'm drawing phospholipids. Y'all remember phospholipids? And these are the proteins in the electron transport chain. Okay, so the first thing, in order for the light reaction to occur, we're going to need sunlight to come in. Sunlight to come in and split water. And sunlight actually hits these, these photosystems also. Sunlight is going to come in and split water. And when we split water, immediately what's going to happen is the oxygen is going to be released as a gas, a waste product. Because out the stomata, the hydrogen molecules, remember hydrogen has one electron and one proton, and those hydrogen molecules from water are going to go through the electron transport chain. So the electrons of the water are going to go through the electron transport chain. But as it goes through, the proton, the, the photosystem right here, so this is actually photosystem two, is going to pop up or down, pop a hydrogen molecule. So I'll make this a hydrogen molecule. Okay, so the electrons go through, and as the electrons go through, the photosystems push hydrogen molecules into the thylakoid membrane. Okay, this is photosystem two. This is photosystem one. They're named that way based off the way they were discovered. Photosystems are proteins that absorb light in the electron transport chain, and they're full of chlorophyll. Remember that chlorophyll is what gives plants its green color, and it's got magnesium in the center of it. So electrons go through, and as the electrons go through, the photosystems create a proton gradient down here. So this is actually active transport, These protein, those protons pumping. So here I have lots of proton gradients. That's all active transport. Um, and the electrons from the magnesium in here are also transporting the electrons down. So as the protons build up their gradient, they've got to go somewhere. So the protons are going to go up through this last protein. And it has a special name. Its special name is ATP synthase. Okay, and this is an enzyme, ASE, it's an enzyme that synthesizes or makes ATP. So as these hydrogen molecules go through ATP synthase, ATP synthase turns and it's going to make ATP. It's going to phosphorylate an ATP molecule. Okay, but the so the electrons go down, the hydrogens go um, through into the thylakoid membrane and then through ATP synthase. But the electrons have to bind somewhere. And the electrons bind to NAD plus and they make NA, it's actually NADPH. So NADP plus becomes NADPH. So these are the two things made from the light reaction of photosynthesis. So you made ATP and NADPH. The second step of photosynthesis is called the Calvin cycle 
for the light independent. So it doesn't require light, but it can happen all the time. Okay, so the second part of photosynthesis happens in the stroma, which is outside the thylakoid. And the first thing in order for the Calvin cycle to happen, CO2 has to enter into the cell, into the chloroplast. So we need actually three of them, but you need CO2. Okay, so CO2 has one carbon in it. So I'm going to draw one carbon right here. And that CO2 is going to bind with a five carbon molecule. So I'm still still drawing carbons, five of them. One, two, three, four, five. And this five carbon molecule is called RUBP. It's already in the stroma. So CO2 binds with RUBP and it binds, it actually does it three times. Okay, so here we have three CO2 molecules, and they've bonded with five carbon molecules called RUBP, so three five-carbon molecules. When they bind together, as soon as they do, they break apart into two three-carbon molecules called G3P. So that's a G3P, and that's a G3P. So the one binds with five and makes six, and then the six breaks apart into two three carbon molecules, of, and these are called G3P. Okay, well these G3Ps, one of them is going to be used to make sugar, and the other five, the other five, are actually going to be recycled back into the stroma to make RUBP. So only one of the G3P is going to be used to make sugar. And remember that sugar is C6H12O6. So I need six carbons and I only have three. G3P is half of glucose essentially. So I'm going to need to do this whole process twice. So the Calvin cycle, or the light independent reaction, has to happen twice so that I can get two G3Ps for sugar. Okay, so the light reaction made two really important molecules of energy. The light reaction took in solar energy and made cellular energy. Well, that cellular energy was used when CO2 came in to make one molecule of glucose. So. The light reaction we said made ATP and NADPH, which were used to make glucose in the Calvin cycle. So the products of the light reaction were used in the, as reactants for the Calvin cycle. Okay, one more thing I want to say about the light reaction over here. There's two, there's two kinds. There's cyclic and non-cyclic. So what I've shown you here is the non-cyclic photosynthesis. The electrons start right here and they go through and bind to NADPH. So they don't make a circle. These electrons go from the beginning from water and they bind to NADPH, which is the final electron acceptor. Okay, so that's non-cyclic is the yellow line. Okay, cyclic photosynthesis is where sunlight just comes into photosystem one comes into photosystem one. It's going to go through another protein right here called ferrodoxin that I haven't drawn in. Ferrodoxin and then around back to photosystem one. So it actually goes from photosystem one to ferrodoxin. It comes right here into another protein called cytochrome C. So it starts photosystem one, ferrodoxin, cytochrome C, and then photosystem one again. Um, so this, the only purpose of this, the electrons are, so, are circling or cycling. The purpose of this is to make extra ATP. These two systems are happening simultaneously. One thing you want to know, cytochrome C is a protein in the electron transport chain that helps to make energy, but all organisms have it. So it um, leads to the belief of common ancestors. Cytochrome C, all organisms have it. We have non-cyclic here, 
and cyclic. So non-cyclic makes ATP and NADPH, while cyclic just makes extra ATP.